The N-400 form under U.S. Customs and Immigration Services is the application by foreign-born aliens to naturalize into the United States. An erasure poem is one derived by crossing out an original text. I am an alien not from U.S. origin. I take a sharpie to 36 pages of immigration documents crossing out the original text. The N-400 form becomes an erasure in 14 amendments. This poem is not derived from the poet's origin. One, notice any immigration. Notice hearing. Notice see. Notice you. Two, to the immigrant, Homeland is a process delayed. Three, fingerprints, disposable, a number, unpermitted. Immigrants are all of the above. Four, about the United States, do not support the criminal history. Five, you are what you have abandoned. Six, identify alien, copy self. Seven, separate your open wounds in the process. Eight, verify all has been destroyed. Nine, Naturalization cannot capture your free, cannot level your personal for political. 10. This application, simplified, is persecution of your own safety to ensure social security. 11. Reschedule, 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 reschedule a time, time. Time, time again, time, time, date and time. Twelve, resubmit, resubmit, resubmit. Thirteen, please. Fourteen, you will never belong. Good evening, everyone. My name is Adrienne Pond, Executive Director of the Office of Civic Engagement and Immigrant Affairs, and welcome to the 20th anniversary of the San Francisco Immigrant Rights Commission. Tonight, we celebrate 20 years of the Commission's important work on behalf of immigrant communities. We'll also be honoring champions and role models uh, with the first ever Immigrant Leadership Awards. Now, tip-off time for the NBA Finals and our Golden State Warriors is at 6 o'clock, and we will be updating you uh, on a regular basis because I'm missing my game tonight. Because, so we appreciate all of you coming here tonight to celebrate an important event. Uh, this is more than just an awards ceremony and reception. Tonight is really about affirming our commitment to immigrant communities and recognizing the important role that our immigrants play in contributing to the success and vitality and vibrancy of this city and nation. We're celebrating all that we stand for as a people of these United States, our core values of dignity, respect, equality, and equity for all, not just some. So thank you for coming. We want to thank our opening performances by Norman Lau and the Lion Dance ME Troupe, trumpet soloist Ron Coolidge, whom we met last year at one of our citizenship workshops, and Ron's wife Masha is a new U.S. citizen, uh, Youth Speaks uh, poet Eugen Chen, a student at UC Berkeley, and the 2017 Bay Area Teen Poetry Slam finalist who just performed her piece, N-400 Erasure. Uh, for those of you who have gone through the citizenship uh, application, that's the N-400 is the 21-page uh, application for citizenship. 
Uh, we'd also like to acknowledge some special guests with us tonight, the Honorable Edward Milton Chen, U.S. District Judge of the North, Northern District of California. I'm going to read these names really fast, and if I forget anyone, just flag one of the staff. We'll make sure we call you out. Daniel Chen, no relation to Judge Chen, uh, District Director of U.S. Senator Kamala Harris's office, who has also left us a wonderful, beautiful letter and certificate. Um, the SFPD command staff, Assembly Member Rob Bonta, Sheriff Vicki Hennessy, Public Defender Jeff Adachi, Department on the Status of Women Executive Director Do Dr. Emily Marasi, Cheryl Davis, Executive Director of the Human Rights Commission, the County Clerk Catherine Stephanie, Supervisor Norman Yee and Hillary Ronan, Assessor Recorder Carmen Chu, Derek Brown, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, Brian Chu, the Mayor's Office of Housing and Community Development. We are also honored to have consulates from the countries of Ireland, the Philippines, Indonesia, Ukraine, Korea, Guatemala, India, Germany, Mexico, Brazil, Canada, and Mongolia. I could finally read my writing. Sorry about that. Uh, we also have a number of commissioners from uh, many, many commissions. I'm going to try to get all of the commissions read here. Uh, the Juvenile Probation Commission, Police Commission, Community Investment and Infrastructure, Civil Service, Rent Board. Um, I will find a list of uh, all the commissioners, and I'm sure we have missed many of them, but they, uh, some of the ones present here tonight are uh, from the Entertainment Commission, Al Perez, uh, Stephen Lee, Rent Commission, Cal Abe, uh, Graffiti Advisory Board Commissioner, Rebecca delgado Rotman, Commission on the Status of Women, Commissioner Julia uh, Su, uh, Entertainment Commissioner, Dory Kaminong, Asian Art Commissioner, Carmen Collette, Board of Appeals Commission President Daryl Honda, Human Rights Commissioner Richard Pio Roda, and John Kramer, of course, from USCIS. John is our local hero. Uh, I'm not going to get you in trouble, right, John, by saying that. Uh, so if I have missed anyone, please let the staff know. We'll be sure to give you a shout out a little later in the program. A number of certificates of recognitions have been issued by elected leaders to the Immigrant Rights Commission. So we'd like to thank uh, the offices of Assembly Members David Chu and Phil Ting, State Senator Scott Weiner, the State Board of Equalization uh, Member Fiona Ma, Assessor Recorder Carmen Chu's office. Um, so everyone in this room tonight is a VIP and an honored guest, and we are so happy to celebrate with you. I'll be happier when we hear the score in about two hours. If we missed anyone, uh, again, please let us know, and we're going to get started with the program. Okay, so it is my honor to introduce our hometown hero and champion, who in the face of great challenges, especially at the federal level, has led our city and continued to work for a more just and equitable society with not only his words, but his actions. Known for his mustache, sense of humor, and love of all things golf and basketball, please welcome the Honorable Edwin L. Lee, M. Lee, Mayor of San Francisco. Thank you, Adrian, for that very illustrative introduction. And also, I want to congratulate and thank our co-chairs, our chair and our vice chair of our Immigrant Rights Commission, Celine and Mario. And thank all of you for being here at People's Palace. You know, 20 years ago, when this city got together and realized that there were so many people who weren't being counted during the census. So many communities that had not had their day in San Francisco because somehow the language barrier prevented them from getting all the services that they need. 20 years ago, we realized people who were calling on the services couldn't get the right language down. We realized there were a lot of groups who felt discriminatory barriers, didn't know who to turn to, didn't know how to call the Human Rights Commission or some of the other 
bodies that were created to help equalize their rights in the city. We had too many peoples whose immigrant stories of their contributions to San Francisco were not being told, were not being told by the city nor heard. And little did we know that 20 years ago, while we were struggling to reform and improve our immigration laws, that we would later realize that today we have to fight our own government to improve those immigration laws. A government that is trying to set up divisiveness and barriers for us to overcome even more. Things that we thought we would put in the past, we still today fight even harder to make sure that we enjoy those freedoms. And so we began this organization called the Immigrant Rights Commission with great unity and great understanding of the people that we needed to serve. And through these 20 years, we made some fantastic improvements. We got some languages to be declared the official languages of all San Franciscans. And whether it was Chinese or Spanish or Tagalog, we at least made that advancement and there is more languages to be covered. We created the municipal identification card to make sure that those that were living in shadows could have a right to ride the buses and to get their education without fear. Many years ago, we declared our city a sanctuary city and today, I'm here to say we are and will always be a sanctuary city for everyone in this city. And so I want to say thank you to all of our present and past commissioners on the Immigrant Rights Commission. I am so proud of the work that you're doing. You're fearless in standing up. We have to fight a little harder these days because sometimes our challenges are no longer from outside our shores. They seem to be more and more domestic. And so we continue this struggle and this fight. I join all of you as the mayor of this city, uplifting each other to make sure we support the causes that we believe in, that we are the city of the summer of love, where we invite more people who want to be here, who want to live out their lives, live out their freedoms without barriers and without discrimination, you're going to be welcome in San Francisco. And we're not just going to welcome you in, we're going to fight for you as well. I join the other mayors across this wonderful state of California, and in a couple of weeks I'll join the mayors at the United States Conference of Mayors to give a voice to all those that live here in San Francisco and every major city across the country, we will stand up for our immigrants. We will make sure there is less discrimination. We will fight for them. And when we fight, we'll win in the courts, we'll win in the streets, we'll win at our city halls. But the most important thing is we win the hearts of people who want to be part of America. You know, I want to say also, as I went through the list of honorees that you are identifying tonight, they are such an important list of people and organizations that truly represent what we're struggling for. Now, today, you have companies who recognize the pathways to citizenship and honor us with their resources, their volunteers, so that we can have a less expensive pathway for everyone who wants to be a citizen and to make sure they can afford that pathway. You'll be honoring tonight those who have been in the community for so many years struggling. And I know that there are those that we honor in the past who struggled for civil rights in our country, who went all the way to court, to the highest courts in our country, to prove what? To prove that we have a right to be here and not being discriminated against. You'll be honoring some of our young people tonight 
who join us and say, we too have a right to be here. and We will do our part as young people through the internet, through the communications that we have to fight against bands and fight against walls and to build more bridges in our city. We will be honoring them as well. There's a whole history of people that we want to honor, but we do it for our communities, we do it for our families, we do it for the generations of people who came to the city seeking a better life, not wanting to live in the shadows, wanting to be full-fledged participants in our city. And we will always protect our Muslim brothers and sisters in our city. So tonight is a celebration of 20 years of commitment the city has, but we want to go on for another 100 years welcoming more of the people who want freedom, who want uh, to end the discrimination, who don't want walls to be built in our whole world. We struggle not just for the residents of San Francisco. We will continue being the light for other international cities and countries who are uh, experiencing uh, their discriminatory fears. And we will do our best to make sure people don't live in fear here, nor do they think that fear should guide our policies. It should be compassion, inclusion, love. Those are the principles that guide our policies here in San Francisco. So I will continue joining our supervisors, our Immigrant Rights Commission, our Human Rights Commission, and all of you who are out there to create pathways for people to be successful and safe and enjoy the life that they came here to enjoy. This is what San Francisco is about, and I congratulate all of you for celebrating the 20 years and getting ready for the next 50 to 100 years this is America, this is where we belong, this is what we fought for, and we get to enjoy the benefits of the citizenry of, of San Francisco and America. Thank you for being here tonight. And if I may, I'd like to present this to the chair and vice chair of our Immigrant Rights Commission, of course, to the director as well, this proclamation that today declares this the Immigrant Heritage Month here in San Francisco. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for always encouraging and inspiring us. The San Francisco Immigrant Rights Commission is one of the oldest and few such commissions in the nation. Uh, Fifteen committed members are appointed by the mayor and the board of supervisors, and strong, inclusive, and smart leadership are the earmarks of this commission. Uh, so it's my great pleasure to introduce the leadership team of Chair Celine Canelli and Vice Chair Mario P Paz. Uh, Chair Canelli is the Executive Director of the Irish Immigration Pastoral Center and National Chair of the Coalition of Irish Immigrant Centers. She is a talented, fierce advocate for undocumented immigrants and immigration reform. Vice Chair Paz is Executive Director of the Good Samaritan Family Resource Center, which primarily serves the Latino immigrant community in the mission, and he's a well-known community and philanthropic leader. He's a passionate and savvy advocate for children, youth, families, and immigrant communities. Uh, the Chair and Vice Chair of the Immigrant Rights Commission. Good evening and welcome to this special night. We are at a crossroads as a nation and as a city. And that is why it is so important for us to support immigrants and all communities who live in fear of discrimination, persecution, and violation of their human and religious rights. We must remember the core values of this nation and city and continue to work for a more just and equitable world. 
For over 20 years, the San Francisco Immigrant Rights Commission has partnered with the city and the community to ensure the well-being and inclusion of immigrants. From language rights to inclusion and quality of life for our immigrant communities, we have worked hard to ensure that immigrants are recognized for their many contributions and are treated with dignity and respect, the dignity and respect that we wish for all Americans. We live in what we still believe to be the land of liberty, where freedom reigns and democracy rules. We must have faith that we, the people of the city and county of San Francisco and of the United States of America can continue to build upon the success of our immigrant brothers and sisters to ensure equal rights, comprehensive immigration reform and fair and humane policies for all. As the Immigrant Rights Commission, we pledge to continue doing our work with honesty, integrity, and competence. Thank you all for being with us tonight. Thank you, Chair Kennelly, and good evening, everyone. Can you join me in applause one more time for our, the leader and chair of our commission, as well as Director Pond, Executive Director of the Office of Civic Engagement and Government Affairs. Thank you for your leadership. For over 150 years, immigrants have contributed to the success and vibrancy of San Francisco. Today, we have some of the strongest local laws and protections for our immigrants and for underserved communities. As a commission, we stand together in support of our immigrant communities. Although we all come from different experiences, circumstances, and places, we are here in San Francisco to work on behalf of our communities. With that, it's my pleasure to introduce my fellow colleagues of the San Francisco Immigrant Rights Commission, and I will ask all of you to stand if I call your names. Commissioner Eleha Isani, please stand. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Felix Fuentes, Commissioner Donna Fuji, Commissioner Harugu Gaimi, Commissioner Gaimi couldn't be here today because she's working really hard on important immigrant cases right at this very moment. Commissioner Florence Kong. <laughs> Commissioner Ryan Kojaste, please. Please stand, thank you. My great colleague and fierce leader, Commissioner Melba Maldonado, where are you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Franklin Ricarte. Yeah. <laughs> Commissioner Angeles Roy. What is this? <laughs> Commissioner Andre Romanenko. Please stand. Is she there? I know I saw. Did you see her? <laughs> Commissioner Alicia Wang. And Commissioner Michelle Wong. I'd also like to recognize some former commissioners that I believe are here this evening. Former Chair uh, Angus McCarthy, former Commissioner. I did see him there. Thank you. And former Commissioner Toya Moses. Are you here, Toya? Yes. Thank you. Is there anyone else that's served on the commission previously that we have not, that's here this evening, that we missed? We want to make sure we recognize anyone? No, great. Thank you. Thank you. And so we are very pleased this evening to launch the inaugural Immigrant Leadership Awards. The Immigrant Rights Commission is honoring the powerful contributions of local immigrant leaders and championship, champions of immigrant communities. All of our honorees tonight have contributed in different ways to support immigrants, and many are unsung champions. We proudly salute them tonight for their dedication and their fearlessness in fighting for immigrant rights. So our first award is for Corporate Leader, and Microsoft Corporation set the tone for the business sector early on in its open support and recognition of the contributions that immigrants bring to the tech industry and to the country. Microsoft San Francisco, led by Kate O'Sullivan and her team, has supported the San Francisco Pathways to Citizenship Initiative since 2016 by hosting free citizenship workshops at their Market Street headquarters. And this commitment is far more than just providing space or food and, and labor to the effort. Uh, their commitment and respect of immigrants is apparent in every aspect of how they conduct business. Presenting the Corporate Leader Award to Microsoft 
are Mark Rannenberg and Sarah Orton of Fort.us. And we are so lucky because it was Fort.us who introduced the city to Microsoft in the first place. So, uh, Mark and Sarah, all yours. Thank you, Director. It's really uh, an honor to be presenting the Corporate Leader Award today to Microsoft. And I think it's particularly rewarding for us here at Forward.us to be presenting it to Kate O'Sullivan, someone whom we've known for quite some time. She's an active member of our Bay Area Innovation Council, uh, which is a group of thought leaders in the tech industry who have come together and said it's time to pass common sense immigration reform. And I could think of no better person to, who exemplifies many of the traits that we look for in some of those leaders than Kate. And so I want to congratulate you, Kate, and Microsoft, and I wish you all the best in the future and look forward to many years of partnership going forward. Thank you so much. This is an incredible honor. We are grateful for this acknowledgement today, and we're humbled to be here. But truly, this, this moment and this award is not about us. This is about the heart of the movement and all the tireless organizers and volunteers who support the Pathways to Citizenship Initiative. And that starts with Mayor Lee and his incredible team. I don't know if he's still here, but in his incredible team in the Office of Civic Engagement and Immigrant Affairs. Many of them, thank you, Adrian and, and Rich and others are here tonight. Without their vision and focus on creating this public-private partnership in support of our immigrant neighbors and friends, we would not be here. Without the passion and dedication of the partner organizations, we would not be here. Annie Chung and the Self-Help for the Elderly team, somewhere here, um, have been so, such incredible advocates for this program as have the teams at so many vital organizations. Please allow me a moment to acknowledge each one of them. The Asian Pacific Islander Legal Outreach, Catholic Charities, International Institute of the Bay Area, Jewish Family and Children's Services of San Francisco, La Raza Community Resource Center, Asian Pacific Fund, Evelyn and Walter Haas Jr. Fund, the San Francisco Foundation, Cities for Citizenship, Grant Makers Concerned with Immigrants and Refugees, Immigrant Legal Resource Center, New Americans Campaign, the San Francisco Public Library, and the hundreds of individual volunteers who made this program and continue to make this program a success. So this award, it belongs to all of you, this wonderful community of dedicated advocates working to make San Francisco a better place for us all. Thank you very much. leaving my stuff behind. <laughs> Get your award, it's a nice one. Okay, next up, our next award goes to an entrepreneur who not only employs immigrants, but also opens her business and doors to community, uh, artists and community-based organizations, hosting evening meetings and fundraisers so that fellow immigrants can stay informed, know their rights, and not be afraid. Alba Guerra, immigrated to the United States from El Salvador in 1989, first arriving as an undocumented immigrant, undocumented immigrant seeking temporary protective status and eventually gaining her citizenship in 2007. Alba is the owner and founder of Sunrise Restaurant, located in San Francisco's Calle 24 Latino Historic District in the Mission. Presenting the Entrepreneur Leader Award to ALBA is Community Leader and Commissioner Melba Maldonado. It's such an honor for me to present this award to ALBA Guerra. I met ALBA many years ago 
I was uh, at a meeting, I think it was a meeting at the, at the old Caresen headquarters on, on, on Alabama. Uh, and I, I was there with Kempat Descanse, my dear, dear friend and hero of our community, Eric Quesada. And Eric said, let's go, let's go to Sunrise and continue talking. You know, we were talking about something important. So uh, that's the first time I went to the restaurant with Eric. And today, it is my great pleasure to present the inter... What? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> to present to you... This award to Alba Guerra and to Sunrise Restaurant. Alba is a great role model, an example of a hardworking immigrant woman. Alba is also incredibly creative and smart be, uh, and a businesswoman that decides to take her delicious dishes, her delicious food, and open a spot in the mission that has become a, really, a real landmark. Thank you, Alba, for your entrepreneurship, for your strength, and support of our community. Good luck, and I hope you all visit her restaurant. Y él te va a interpretar. Ok. ¿Eh? Así okay. te lo poquito a poquito para que él interprete. Ok. Ok. Buenas tardes. <risa> muchas gracias, muchas gracias. Mi nombre es Alba Guerra, ya escucharon. Soy la dueña del restaurante Sonray. Y... Sunrise Restaurant. Um, yo soy del de Salvador, llegué aquí en el año 89 y empecé a trabajar en, en restaurantes hasta que el 2005 abrí mi propio negocio. Uh, I am from El Salvador and I came here in 1989 until I decided to open my own business in 2005. Y cuando lo abrí también deseaba abrir un espacio a la comunidad porque estábamos viendo muchos negocios que no, no ofrecen nada y entonces nosotros queríamos hacer algo diferente y decidimos dejar los días jueves para uh, eventos comunitarios. When I opened my business, I realized that there were many businesses that were not contributing to the community, so I decided to open my business on Thursdays especially for the community so that there can be special events in it. Y entonces cada jueves, ahora lo hacemos viernes, pero cada semana um, diferentes organizaciones vienen y hacen sus eventos y Sonray dona el 20% de las ventas de ese día. Um, we also hold these events on Fridays these days, but all the organizations that participate in the restaurant uh, raise funds there, and they, um, I'm very happy to be able to help them uh, meet their goals. Um, um, muchísimas gracias. Esto no fuera posible si no es por el apoyo de todas. Gracias a todas las personas que me han apoyado de una o diferente manera que siempre han estado conmigo. Les quiero dar las gracias. I am very thankful, and I would like to thank everyone that along the way has uh, presented their support to, towards me and my business. I'm, I'm really, really thankful. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias a ustedes por este reconocimiento. Gracias. Okay, sports fan, we need a little uh, positive energy sent our, to the Warriors because it's um, 20 to 12 Cavs. Darn it. We just wish LeBron the best. Hope he doesn't trip, right? Okay, 
Uh, moving right along, next we honor two grassroots leaders who through their integrity, commitment, smarts, and passion inspire all of us. Uh, Lorena Melgarejo is community organizer for the Archdiocese of San Francisco and Faith in Action Bay Area. Lorena was born in Paraguay and is a former vice chair of the Immigrant Rights Commission. She's a passionate, tireless, and powerful voice for social, racial, and economic justice, particularly for the most vulnerable members of the community. She's a true sister to all of us, and you know you can't ever say no to Lorena. Adubu Traore is co-director of the African Advocacy Network in San Francisco and also assists the U.S. Asylum Office. A native of the Ivory Coast, Adubu has organized support and services for members of the African and Afro-Caribbean immigrant diaspora and is a former Fulbright Fellow. He is the master of many skills, degrees, and languages, but we all know him as a leader of great integrity, dignity, humility, and respect for all people. Presenting the Grassroots Leader Award is Father Richard Smith, vicar of the Episcopal of, uh, Church of St. John's the Evangelist in the Mission. That's a mouthful, you guys. Father Smith is a well-known and respected activist and sanctuary movement leader. Father Smith? Well, I'm so grateful to, to the commission for honoring Lorena Melgarejo, this beautiful woman with a wonderful laugh, a heart, oops, I gotta hold on to her award here. <laughs> this beautiful woman with a wonderful laugh, a heart as big as the sky, my teacher and my dear friend. I'm sure that the current president had no clue that he would have to contend with women like Lorena out here on the left coast because this woman is fearless and unstoppable. Trust me, she persists. I've seen her down on 7th Street outside the federal building walk right into the middle of rush hour traffic, bring everything to a screeching halt so that some of us could follow her out into the street and do civil disobedience protesting our unjust immigration laws. I've seen her organize more vigils than I can count, outside ICE down on Sansom Street, outside Feinstein's office, Pelosi's office, outside the People's Palace, supporting immigrant families, hoping to spare them from being torn apart by deportation. And whether she does these things with her own beautiful smile or sometimes with tears running down her cheeks. She always makes it sound like we are the heroes. She's the last one to know it, but we know that in every instance, Lorena is the hero. She's the hero. And when, and when I think of Lorena, a few other people come to mind. One is a man that so many of us knew and loved in the mission and throughout the city to whom she gave her heart and soul, Eric Quezada. We know that Eric is here with us now, beaming with infinite pride, a big smile on his face. And just in case, just in case you never had a chance to meet Eric or you can't quite remember what that smile looked like, all you have to do is look at their beautiful daughter. Can I say this? She's a badass capoeira champion, Ishel, whose smile, her smile can light up the whole world. So thank you, Lorena. Blessings on you, your amazing partner, Mauricio, your lovely daughter. What an honor to walk at your side, compañera. La lucha sigue. Sí. Thank you. Uh, thank you to everyone. Um, I'm Lorena, and um, I don't believe in heroes. I believe that each one of us has an obligation 
to do everything in our power to stand with those around us. And I think the Immigrant Rights Commission and the city of San Francisco is a privilege to be in a city where something like that exists. But because we have that privilege, it's even more of an obligation for each one of us to work harder because it's not enough to have a city that's a sanctuary or to have policies of sanctuary or to have sanctuary churches. It's an obligation for each one of us to live the sanctuary. And I think people like Alba Guerra in her business, her business is a sanctuary. I think Adubu and all the work that he does with the African community, that's what being a sanctuary is, and every single one of us. So I think we are all the heroes, and every award here is a recognition of the work that we do together. Um, I work for Faith in Action, and what we do is really try to walk in our faith, and that means acting. It's not just talking, but acting. And I want to give a recognition to my people that are sitting right there. Lift your hand. Levante la mano. They are the ones who organize all the vigils. They are the ones who stop deportations. Whether we have papers or we don't have papers, we do it. Anyways, I came to this country and I was undocumented for most of the time I've been here. If 20 years ago when I got here, you would have told me that I would get an award for this, I would have laughed. But I think that God has a plan for each one of us. So I just want to encourage everybody to continue doing this work and build this city, as the mayor said, it's an example for the rest of the country where people are truly afraid. Everything we do is a model. So keep on working our businesses, our nonprofits, our city, our city, uh, our supervisors. They are an example for what a city should look like. So thank you so much. God bless you. It is my great honor to, pres to present the uh, second Grassroot Leadership Award to Adubu, um, who certainly takes the award for the tallest of our honorees this evening, and he is uh, a gentle giant. Adubu is the co-founder of African Advocacy Network, and he came to this work with a vision to build a long-lasting organization primarily for and with Africans and Afro-Caribbeans. He began with three part-time staff and today has five full-time and one part-time staff. He is a leader in his community. He is the face of our African and Afro-Caribbean immigrant community in San Francisco. Adubu, it is my great honor to present you with this award. Did you know that would ask me to say a few words? <clears throat> but it's even much harder coming after someone like uh, Lorena. Um, well, I happen to be the person holding this, but I'm holding it for all the poor, all the oppressed. And I would like to say, like many other people before us in America, like those who are gonna come after us, we are here to stay. So, la lucha sigue. Thank you to everybody. And uh, if I'm here, it is a proof that by getting together, we can achieve a lot. We're a small organization, but being part of different platforms, receiving support for our legal services, for our language services, and everything that we need as any other group of immigrants to be part of the patchwork, this racial, cultural, linguistic pat patchwork, and uh, we have appreciated the support of everybody. And I'm speaking here holding this on behalf of Clementine, Joe, Charles, and everybody else, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, everyone, I'm gonna need your good energy. It's 30 to 25 calves. We're closing the gap, at least. Okay, in 2013, Mayor Lee initiated the San Francisco Pathways to Citizenship Initiative. It's a public-private nonprofit effort to naturalize as many eligible legal permanent residents in San Francisco. The initiative began with funding from the city and five philanthropic partners, but the real heart of the effort was a coalition of community-based organizations who have worked together to conduct over 25 citizenship workshops, reaching over 1 million Bay Area residents. And with the help of over 4,000 volunteers, the Pathways partners have prepared nearly 7,000 citizenship applications in the past four years. Presenting the Public-Private Nonprofit Collaborative Leaders Award to Annie Chung, President and CEO of Self-Help for the Elderly, and the Pathways Partners is Immigrant Rights Commission Chair Celine Kennelly. Thank you, Adrian. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to present this award um, as somebody who is a naturalized immigrant and thankfully I only had the 10 page form to contend with and not the 21 page. But that said, uh, I could certainly have done with Pathways to Citizenship uh, back in 1999 when it was my go around. Um, Pathways to Citizenship is an, an, a phenomenal coalition of community partners who came together in 2013 to form the coalition. These seven groups, led by Annie Chung, President and C CEO of Self-Help Self for the Elderly, a warrior in her own right, partnered with the Office of Civic Engagement and Immigrant Affairs and local philanthropic funders to create a strong and effective national model for citizenship. Annie, I would like to welcome you to the stage. You are behind me. Congratulations. Thank you for all the help that you have given. And we wish you all the very best of luck to Pathways for the future. Thank you so much, Celine, and thank you, Adrian. We could not have done it alone. So at this time, I'd like to invite our magnificent seven, our seven CBO partners to come up so that I could introduce you. So besides self-help for the elderly, we have Asian Pacific Legal Outreach, a pillow, is Dean, or someone from a pillow here. We have a Catholic Charities, CYO, we have Francisco here. We have International Institute of the Bay Area, Ellen is here, Ellen. We have the Jewish Children and Family Services, Brad. We have the La Raza Community Resource Center, our very own Commissioner Melba. And we've also had a recently added member, the Re-Rise San Francisco Center for Immigrant Justice. So I hope Carlos or Tom or one of you are up here. So the pathway for citizenship, as Adrian said, was started by Mayor Lee back in 2013. So we really could not have done it alone. Our partners have formed a very strong bond among ourselves. We have only one focus, and that is to naturalize as many LPRs as we can in San Francisco. So reflecting back on the last four years, we're entering our fifth year as a collaborative. We have, uh, as uh, Celine said, we have helped over 7,000 LPRs to submit their forms to Mr. Kramer's office, uh, to USCIS. And there's one statistic that I just want to share with you that make all of us very, very proud. Our job really is to help a lot of low-income families who could not afford the $680 that just went up to $725, the application fee. And our job is to make sure that people can still become U.S. citizens even if they cannot afford the fee. So the fee waiver is a very important part of our work. So every year, we propose to do about 500 fee waivers out of the 2,000 LPRs that we serve each year. But I'm happy to report that this year, already, we have done about 988 fee waivers, almost 1,000. And a very, very quick calculation 
of roughly $700 per application, we have saved our low-income families almost $700,000 this year alone. So over the last four years, we have helped really people that need to be U.S. citizens but couldn't afford it, probably over $3 million worth of application fees. So good job, San Francisco Pathway, and thank you so much for this honor, Salim, and thank you so much for all of your support. Okay, your good karma must be working because the Warriors are up by one, 31-30, woo! And if you're wondering who's feeding me to scores, it's my good, loyal, faithful husband who said his part will be to feed us the scores every two minutes. All right, everyone. Um, our next award is a very special one named in honor of former Immigrant Rights Commission Commissioner and historian Farrah Hale. The first ever Farrah Hale Champion of Justice Award is being presented to the Fred T. Korematsu Institute. This award is personally very touching to me. Uh, since its founding in 2009, the Korematsu Institute's mission has focused on advancing racial equity, social justice, and human rights for all. In February 2017, in light of the 45th President's anti-immigrant statements and Muslim travel ban uh, and his executive orders, founder and executive director Karen Korematsu wrote a courageous opinion piece entitled, When Lies Overrule Rights, reminding Americans about the injustices that can happen when the Constitution is ignored in the name of national security as it was in World War II with the illegal incarceration of 120,000 law-abiding, loyal Japanese Americans. Presenting the Vera Hale Champion of Justice Award tonight, our former IRC Commission Chair, Angus McCarthy, and we are so blessed to have the daughters of Vera Hale, Diane and Laura Dahlenberg, to present the award. Thank you, uh, Director Pon, and uh, congratulations on 20 years in this of immigration, sanctuary city. Uh, hello, fellow immigrants and San Franciscans. It's an honor and privilege to be here this evening. And to my, some of my fellow commissioners, Madam uh, President, Skeleen Kennelly, and my fellow commissioners, some of the names I still see there are still sitting strong on the commission, so well done after all these years. As you know, we all served uh, with Vera, many of us. Um, and I remember when I first joined the commission, Vera was a tough commissioner. We all know that, and I can get some heads, and you didn't know if she liked you or not at first. It was a, it was a journey I had to take with her, and uh, the ice kind of broke a little bit when I told her that my mother was named Vera as well, and she kind of warmed up to me a little bit more. And, uh, and as a real, true, uh, hard-working activist, she was involved in every aspect of the commission, every ad hoc committee that we would put together, every subcommittee we would put together, she was there. And uh, unfortunately, as chair, I had to be at most of them as well. So uh, we came to be good, good friends over the years. So it's an honor and privilege here uh, for the Vera Hill uh, Champion of Justice to be a part of this presentation this evening. Uh, as fellow commissioners, I worked with Vera Hill for many years, always admiring her steadfast call for justice and equality. Uh, Vera Meadows, better commissioners, and I was always a, admire her intelligence, her integrity, her commitment to immigrants and seniors, and, um, and how she uh, always, always was there for the seniors and the, and the underserved. And as I look at her daughters here tonight, it's a pleasure and honor to meet you. I can see Vera very much and Lauren here, so please, there you go. Thank you. As Vera's daughter, I'm happy to present this award to Karen, another champion of justice. 
It's a wonderful way to honor the memory of my mother and your father. As the daughters of civil rights champions, we proudly carry the ideals and promise of our parents forward. Thank you for your hard work and dedication. Congratulations. And I just want to say, Karen, my sister and I, we, my sister and I were reviewing all of your contributions to the adva advancement of racial equity, social, social justice, and human rights for all, and we were thinking, realizing we haven't contributed quite as much as you, and we are truly inspired and admire the work that you do. And as an educator, I plan to take um, the work of your father and share Fred Car Caramazzo w with my, um, the school that I'm connected with. So thank you so much for your work. It's an honor to present this award to you. Good evening, uh, Mayor Lee, Immigrant Rights Commissioners, honored guests, community supporters, and of course, Golden State Warrior fans. <laughs> Thank you to the Immigrant Rights Commissioners for bestowing on me the first Vera Hale Justice Award, as it is an honor to receive the special recognition named after your former distinguished Immigrant Rights Commissioner. Vera Hale was a compassionate advocate for the justice of immigrants and seniors in San Francisco, and it's inspiring to see her legacy live on with this award and also through her daughters. Immigration is the backbone of our country. In this time of national stress, we want people to know that this country, and especially San Francisco, is a welcoming place, a sanctuary city for all, citizens and non-citizens. Who, is, who aspire to build better lives for their families, contribute to our communities, and make America united and stronger. I too have an immigration story. My grandfather, Korematsu, immigrated to San Francisco from Japan just before the 1906 earthquake, and my grandmother was a picture bride who later arrived at Angel Island. Before the alien land law took an effect on August 10, 1913, my grandfather was able to buy land in an industrial area of East Oakland and build a house and a business, a cut flower nursery. My father, Fred Korematsu, was born in Oakland and was therefore an American citizen. He learned about the Constitution in high school and thought he had rights as an American citizen. When Executive Order 9066 was issued on February 19, 1942, my father thought it was wrong to incarcerate 120,000 people of Japanese ancestry without due process of law just because they looked like the enemy. This is the 75th anniversary of Executive Order 9066, and we are coming close to making the same mistakes again. As a result of my father's fight for justice, the state of California has honored on his birthday of January 30th, Fred Korematsu Day of Civil Liberties and the Constitution. It's in perpetuity, it's, uh, it's recognized each year, it's not a holiday yet, but we're working on it. I founded the Fred T. Korematsu Institute to carry on with my father's charge of education. Teachers, can go to our website of korematsuinstitute.org and sign up for our curriculum kits free of charge. We have uh, elementary, middle school, and high school lesson plans that talk about my father's fight for justice and how it relates to our issues today of immigration and national security and racial profiling. Also, we will have our Fred Korematsu Day event uh, in, in January of next year, so uh, uh, check our uh, website as well. So earlier this year, I signed on to an amicus brief. It's called Friends of the Court to challenge the immigration ban. Today, the good news is that the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals has blocked the Muslim ban. <laughs> Racial profiling was wrong in 1942, and it's wrong now. We all need to keep fighting together. This, probably the next state step is going to the Supreme Court, and we'll have those challenges as well. We all need to pro promote civic engagement and education. 
Thank you, San Francisco Immigration Rights Commission, for being the shining light to uphold our civil liberties and the Constitution for all immigrants and all Americans. Remember my father's words. Stand up for what is right. When you see something wrong, speak up and, and, and sorry, we, <laughs> we stand up for what is right. When you see something wrong, protest, but not with violence. Otherwise, he won't listen to you. They won't listen to you. But don't be afraid to speak up. Thank you. Go Warriors. Thank you, that was incredible. Okay, I'm not gonna call out the score until the warriors are ahead again, all right? Okay, uh, so I just wanted to recognize another commissioner um, of the Community Investment and Infrastructure Committee, Marilee Mondahar, who just happens to be the mother of one of our commissioners. You didn't hear that from me. Okay, our next award, the Youth Leader Award, has two recipients, and they're quite amazing. Uh, we proudly present this award to Camelia and Kayla Razavi, co-organizers of No Ban, No Wall SF, one of the largest and most peaceful mass protests in recent times. The Razavi sisters are currently developing an organization to fight for social justice in the new administration. Not only are they amazing organizers, but also hardworking advocates technology entrepreneurs and writers. Presenting the Youth Leadership Award to the Razavi Sisters are our anniversary event co-chairs, Commissioners Donna Fuji and Franklin Ricarte. It is our greatest pleasure to present the Youth Leader Award to two deserving young leaders who are fearless, smart, and courageous. Camilla is 25, Kayla is 21. Their parents are both immigrants from Iran and their mother was a refugee. Camilla Razavi serves as operations associate at Plowshares Fund and was a White House intern in President Barack Obama's Domestic Policy Council and Office of Social Innovation. Kayla Razavi is a quality manager at Originate, a San Francisco software company. She's also the founder of a social impact startup called Thera, an online chat platform connecting survivors of sexual assault to locally sourced and certified volunteers. These two are definitely ones to watch. Congratulations, Camille and Kayla. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, first and foremost, we want to thank the city of San Francisco for helping us in our one week extravaganza of organizing our mass protest. <laughs> um, we had 10,000 people attend our protest um, right outside City Hall and Civic Center. Um, and we couldn't have done it without the cooperation of the incredible Parks and Rec Department who answered all of my calls and emails um, and the incredible park rangers and the SFPD who told us that we can protest at any time because we were so um, obedient and so clean. <laughs> um, and thank you so much to the Immigrant Rights Commission um, for this honor. We're, we're really honored to be here and to be getting this award today. We never would have imagined it. Um, and thank you to the supervisors and the commissioners and Senator, uh, sorry, <laughs> Mayor Ed Lee. Um, and I'll give it off to Kayla. Thank you, Camelia. I just wanted to thank the people who made <laughs> Camelia and I possible <laughs> to be standing here. Our matriarch, Afsat Arampur, who brought my mother and her sisters and brother to America from Iran. 
a couple decades ago um, as refugees of war. And it's my greatest honor to accept this on your behalf. My daddy, John Reza Razavi, a businessman entrepreneur who's inspired me beyond words. Mommy, John. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> um, thank you all so much. Camille and I are, we are products of immigrants. We are beaming with joy to be here accepting this award. And truly, 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 Im immigrants are what make America so amazing. And San Francisco being the melting pot of it all is just, it's an honor to live here. Thank you so much. You guys don't want, don't want to know the score, right? 39.41 calves. We're closing in on it. Okay, our final award of the evening is a very special recognition. It was supposed to be a surprise to beloved leader and hero, uh, Commissioner Felix Fuentes, AKA Alcalde Felix, <laughs> Mayor Felix. Presenting the honor to Commissioner Felix Fuentes is our vice chair and his good friend, Mario Paz. Um, so I'm the one that sort of blew the surprise, so I know. <laughs> um, I present this, this award with lots of mixed emotions. And if I can just say a few words before I present this to my good friend, Felix. Um, this is a special evening for many of us. Um, it's a special evening because there's been this dark cloud. There is a dark cloud that's settled over our immigrant communities. It's a, cloud of it's a cloud of fear. It's a cloud of intimidation. It's a cloud of uncertainty. But today, it's a day of light. It's a day of celebration. And I think you've heard all these amazing stories of these incredible leaders immigrant leaders in our community who've made incredible contributions to make this city great, to make this country great. And my fellow Commissioner Felix here is an example, also an example of the many contributions that immigrants make to San Francisco. And it's with mis mixed emotions because he has retired from the commission but also retired his position at the Office of Civic Engagement and Immigrant Affairs. He's gonna be returning home to his native home of Guatemala to be with home with his new wife and children, who he misses dearly. So I'm very happy for him from a personal level, but sad that we are losing a strong immigrant leader, Felix. Um, Felix Fuentes has dedicated more than 10 outstanding years of service both to the commission, serving two consecutive terms as vice chair. He has dedicated his professional life to advocating and empowering the Latino immigrant community and ensuring fair labor practices for immigrants and workers in San Francisco, including playing a major role in organizing uh, residents to participate in the 2010 decennial census count. He is an active member on numerous organizations, including many immigrant worker and labor rights groups in San Francisco. In honor of his retirement from the commission, we thank Commissioner Fuentes for his dedicated service. Felicidades, Felix. Good evening, everyone. Um, what a big surprise. Um, I didn't prepare the speech because uh, I just found out about this like a couple hours ago when I came to the, uh, this place because I saw the program. So <laughs> thank you for keeping it secret, guys. Uh, many years ago, when I came undocumented to this country, I never thought that 
one day I, I will be the vice chair of the Human Rights Commission or that I will be here to give you the recognition. Uh, tonight, I'm going to be brief. Um, I just want to thank some people that they uh, really have been very instrumental in my, um, in my career, in my uh, 10 years as a commissioner. Uh, one of them um, is the staff uh, uh, of the San Francisco Labor Council that they encouraged me and helped me to get into the commission in 2007. Uh, also, I would love to thank our executive director, Eddie Ampon, for her guidance, leadership, and commitment to the commission for many, many years. When I just joined the commission, um, I met Adrian, and uh, she was very su supportive since the beginning. Uh, I was, uh, I just, it's when I just left the San Francisco Labor Council, and she offered me a position in the Office of Civic Engagement and Immigrant Affairs, and I've been there ever since. Um, also, I would love to thank uh, the staff of the Office of Civic Engagement and I Immigrant Affairs for all your help for, uh, personally and for the commission. Uh, also, I would love to thank my fellow commissioner for the leadership and commitment to helping the community. And a big, big thank you to our mayor, Ed Lee, for his commitment to keep our community together and for making San Francisco a city where everybody is welcome. Finally, I wanted to tell you that this is my last day in the commission, uh, but that doesn't mean that uh, um, this is the end of my fight. No matter where I'm going to be, I'm committed to keep fighting, especially in these uncertain times, until we achieve justice for, all for the immigrant community, because immigrant rights are human rights. So thank you very much. Okay, everyone, warriors are up by two, 45-43. Okay, what an amazing group of honorees tonight. Please join me in congratulating all of our leaders. So we'd like to invite everyone here to join us in celebrating and volunteering for the rest of Immigrant Heritage Month. It's the month of June. Uh, we will be co-hosting an Immigrant Heritage Month pop-up in San Francisco on June 29th and June 30th from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. each day at the Laundry in the Mission to celebrate the contributions and achievements of immigrants with our partners at Fort.us. There will be a variety of programming that will include events such as Know Your Rights training, video screenings, spoken word, and much more. Immigrant Heritage Month, started by Fort.us, is a nationwide effort to gather and share the inspirational stories and incredible contributions of immigrants to America. This year marks the fourth annual Immigrant Heritage Month. We are also encouraging everyone to spread the word about the upcoming San Francisco Pathways to Citizenship Initiative, a free workshop. Uh, the citizenship workshop will be this Saturday, June 17th at City College Ocean Campus starting at 9.30 a.m. So as we close tonight's program, a few thank yous to everyone. I'm sure I'm going to miss um, a dozen people, but going to try to make this happen. The San Francisco, thank you to the San Francisco Immigrant Rights Commission, the Office of Civic Engagement and Immigrant Affairs, the Mayor's Office and Neighborhood Services, the Mayor's Staff, the City Administrator's Office, City Hall Events, SFGov TV, Microsoft Corporation, and Foodism Catering, Henry Him for the wine, uh, Jamie Richardson and Melissa Chan, event coordinators, they've done a spectacular job. Alfredo and Anastasia for our event 
photographers, they've been taking pictures of all of you all evening, our talented performers, and all of you for being here tonight and making San Francisco the welcoming, inclusive, and amazing place it is. Uh, to close the program, there has to be uh, a, a bomb moment uh, before, before Adrian closes out to thank our director and oh, yes. uh, of the Office of Civic Engagement and Immigrant Affairs, Adrian Pond. Thank you. Thank you, Adrian. <laughs> Sorry about that. Thank Sorry, you. we had to surprise you. Okay. <laughs> thank you, guys. Okay, so to close the program off, please welcome back Ron Coolidge. Now, there's a little story about Ron because last I told you last year at one of our citizenship workshops, he and his wife, Masha, were work, walking out of the auditorium, the Bill Graham, and I saw the trumpet in his back pocket. Yes, he carries a trumpet in his back pocket, and I just kind of yelled out and said, Ron, why don't you play for us? And he just played the most amazing song. So he started our program. He's going to finish it off, um, and uh, following his trumpet encore, uh, please enjoy the reception. Uh, you're going to hear entertainment or see entertainment from the Kennelly School of Irish Dance and singer-guitarist uh, Diana Gameros. So, Ron, all yours. <laughs> 